The final culmination in the Sabre Wing line is the twin engine version. It's actually how I started this whole thing. I wanted to design a twin engine aircraft. Okay, well, first I'll probably go to uh, where we are right now, which is, as you saw with the prototype here, um, we want to finish up our testing, take it up through its final development. Um, the final development on the Sabre Wing itself is kind of five different steps. Um, the first airplane that we wanted to do with in the Sabre Wing lineup was the experimental amateur build, which is what you see behind you. The next phase is a uh, LSA version of it, uh, which you saw next door, which is in process. Um, we hope to have that one flying by the end of the year. Um, we don't have very much left to do on it, and then that one will be done. We are also starting on a motor glider version. Now, in order to do the motor glider version, you have to have a feather bolt propeller. So we're actually designing that right now with this engine. Um, the, and the turbocharger will help also with the motor glider version. Um, also, at the same time, we're developing what we call the XF, which stands for extra fast which incorporates the 160 horsepower engines um, and it'll be a shorter wingspan, a uh, little lower profile on the turtle deck and canopy and with the options of retracts. Um, now we're already doing the big engines and that's working really well. So we're not gonna have to do very much more testing on that. So we're piecing a lot of data from a lot of different points to pull together to get the final like the XF kit. Um, the XF will also be uh, better for higher aerobatics and, and loads and stuff on it. Um, the final culmination in the Sabre Wing line is the twin engine version. It's actually how I started all this whole thing. I wanted to design a twin engine aircraft. Really? Okay. Um, but to make it affordable, I wanted to do Corvairs. And one reason I wanted to use Corvairs is you can run the engine either direction. So on a twin engine, having counter-rotating engines is a huge advantage. But you also need featherable propellers. So the featherable prop we're doing now and, and going to start testing goes into the development of the twin engine. Once we're done with that twin engine, that's going to be the high point of what I've got in the design uh, frame as far as the Sabre Wing line. Then after that, there's an amphib I want to do, but that's kind of skunk work stuff. Um, and I'm looking for the, that in the next three or four years to be working on that one. The airplane was designed across, with a couple different principles in mind. Um, you've heard of the KISS system to keep it simple, stupid. Um, I also went with a, you know, if you don't have it, it won't break. Least number of parts uh, possible. But one of the biggest uh, ways I designed the airplane is what we call maximum visual progress. Uh, one of the things that's a problem in experimental aviation is that there are a lot of aircraft kits sitting up in rafters or never get completed. And a lot of it is people get tired because they work many hours and then they don't see a lot. It's, you know, how many thousands of rivets do you have to buck on an RV before you start feeling like you have an airplane? In this kit, when you have the fuselage kit, you can be sitting in it in about a week of work. And so you're making airplane noises very, very quickly, which is the most exciting part. So even though it's very early in the, in the build phase of the airplane, you're sitting in it and you're dreaming, you're already considering the panel, how you want this done and that done. And I want to get that, those juices, those creative juices flowing early on. And that motivates people to finish the airplane. So that's, that's one of the ways, but we also built it, designed it, so one of the problems in building aircraft, maintaining aircraft, is being able to maintain it, do changes with it. Um, a lot of aircraft, if you have to work on the avionics or electrical system, you have to be upside down in it. So you're on your back, on the seats, upside down, and you're trying to work on it. This airplane, you can build the whole airplane walking around it. It's built as a boat. It comes in a boat, you put the spar and gear on, and it's laying there and you walk around as you build into it. 
And then down the road, if you want to do maintenance, that front cover behind the engine is always removable. The, uh, the dash cover is also removable. So if you want to adjust your rudder pedals or change out the header tank or do any kinds of upgrades or changes you want down the road, or let's say, let's say you sold the airplane and the guy's four inches shorter than you, well, you can move the rudder pedals up for him. So it gives you a lot more options and, um, and fits a lot more builders that way. That's part of the design concepts behind the, but it also had to look good. That was one of the biggest things. Um, and there's a lot of aircraft out, but very few that actually look good to me. Um, I want to want to fly this thing and we fly it a lot. Um, but in looking good, it's also aerodynamically very clean. Um, so it gives us also a performance upgrade that you're just not going to see across your standard aircraft. So um, my flight, my operational cost is you know, $25 an hour operational cost if I want to, with a Corvair. Um, you get up to, you know, light combings and then of course your costs go up. But that makes aviation affordable again um, for most people. In an airplane that is wide enough, comfortable enough. You can go in a cross country. You're not afraid of it and, um, and easy to build. And you can do it for the price of a new car or a new truck. And, uh, and, and now you get to fly. So that's, those were, if you're talking some of the goals that we had in mind, those were the goals that we were trying to aim for. So, and I think we hit them. You can expect at least a thousand hours out of an engine, um, but your overhaul cost is $2,000 or something in parts. So that's a tenth of a normal overhaul. So when you're spending $10,000 after your initial is because you're getting the front bearing, you're getting some pieces that are for the conversion, but they're not, you don't have to buy them again at the overhaul. You just have to buy your replacement wear items. Now, the nice thing on the Corvair is that it's got a center top cover on it that you can see in the pictures or, and you can take that top cover off and inspect the entire bottom end. So let's say at 500 hours, you take the top cover off, you look at the bottom end, you can check your, pull a rod bearing and look at it, you can look inside of all your cylinders, look at the camshaft, your lifters. If everything looks good, put a new gasket on it and keep going. And then when you get closer to the thousand hour, maybe you'll want to do it every 250 hours or or, and then you can just keep flying it until, you know, you really have a wear issue or, or if you have something that, okay, I'm, I'm having a problem here with your compressions. But it takes 20 minutes to take a head off. It's, it's really easy to work on. And the nice thing is, as in an experimental, guess what? Anybody can work on it. The, uh, the pilot owner can work on it to his heart's content. Anybody can work on it. And an AMP or the builder can sign off the condition inspection every year. With a 100 horsepower engine, so let's say the baseline model of the airplane, you're looking at about 700 pounds usable load, um, so, which is really, really good for an airplane of this size. Uh, expect to only get about 500 feet per minute at that load rating, you know, on a, on a normal day. On a really hot day, it'll be less than that. So that's the bottom end engine. But you'll look at cruising in the 145, 150 mile an hour um, on a clean uh, Sabre wing. Now you got all the wheel fairings and everything, it's nice and clean. You should expect 145, 150 miles an hour. But the 120s, you can get 165, 170 um, with 120 horse. And um, it's been designed for 250. Um, this one's flown to 225 in testing, um, and, uh, but I will typically take the, the turbo engine and do 190 um, easily. So. Wow, awesome. Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, this has been really informative. Again, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to forward to, to Bill here. Thank Thanks. you, Michael. Thank you.